Well, I like to go to, um, if I may, First Corinthians chapter 6. So chapter 6, starting in verse 1, and this title, Lawsuits Among Believers. It says, if any of you has a dispute with another, dare you take it before the ungodly for in judgment instead of before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint as judges even men of little account in the church. I say to this, to this, shame on you. It is possible that there is nobody among you wise enough, or is it possible nobody is wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, one brother goes to the law against another, and this in front of unbelievers. Wow. You know, what I, the Lord has been, I'm not, I mean, this, the, the Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit, and the more I get into that, um, the more I find out that, wow, I need some work, you know, because um, verse 8, Galatians 5, 18 says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Yep. So, you know, someone had mentioned to me a while back, we were talking about some of these protests and, and this believer goes, well, it's legal to do it. And it's like, so it's legal to sue somebody. It's legal to divorce your wife, but yeah. is that something we should do? I mean, really, between believers, so we go, two Christians go up in court. I mean, there, there are times when, you, you know, somebody's done you wrong. I guess the only remedy is, is a lawsuit. But this scripture was brought way before, you know, suit happy California came into play. Oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, God warned you about it then. I mean, I look at like this. We, we don't even think twice about it. You don't care if they're Christian or not. I mean, everybody wants to sue everybody. And so bringing that, so it's like bringing a lawsuit in front of a judge, protesting, <laughs> you know, in front of the world, you know, um, Easter bunnies in front of the world. You know, it, it's just like, but it says you are not, if, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So our, our Christian character should be produced by the spirit, not by the law, not by moral standards that you have set aside, but by the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, against us things, it says there is no law. Um, so I've really been, I don't know, the Lord has been calling me. To, you know, and I, and I said, the, the Christian journey is a walk. Yeah. I mean, the Christian walk is a journey. The Christian walk is a journey. And, you know, um, God will lead you to things. And, and I'm just like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to apply that in every situation that I yeah. encounter. And it's hard. You know, Amen. I mean, you, especially, I mean, with your family, I mean, even your family, your wife, friends, co-workers, strangers, that we are supposed to be led by the spirit. So, you know, this is having losses against brothers, just kind of like, oh, we do so many worldly things. But then we want to go to church and sing in the songs that sing, things change when I call on the name of Jesus. And then we go in front of Judge Judy and sue yeah. somebody, you know, I, I just, um, I mean, I'm, hey, I'm not a saint, not innocent by any means, but the Lord is working with me um, on the fruit of the spirit. Because um, we're supposed to be, you know, led led by the spirit. And these, these things, it didn't say, I don't say anything about protesting here or, you know, hating anyone or, you know, getting back at anyone, it's all the opposite of that. And, um, you know, how we respond, you know, to social injustices, it's, I'm, it's, not, it's not what this, this word says. And so when you're not in line with God's will, 
and what his word says. That's what happens. He started doing things out of, you know, was the you know it's legal to smoke marijuana. Okay, those are we're not. That's what you don't even should even know about. We're not under the law. So yeah. if you were doing these things, you wouldn't even have to worry about it. You wouldn't have to worry about it because you, you what do you care about is it's it's a crime to kill somebody. You're under the spirit. You don't need to even worry about that. You know, um, you, you know, same-sex marriage is legal. <laughs> you know, we well, don't have to worry about that, right? You know, I like the way Lauren you say, "born again." Yeah, that's why the church it needs to be born again. You yeah, know? we're still stuck back in the in the womb we came out of. We ain't been born again. Yeah, and the message here is for believers. It's not for unbelievers. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, right. writing to the you know the Corinthian nation or state or whoever it is. He's writing to the church, commanding the church not to sue each other. Yeah. So if we see the world suing each other, that's the world. You know, yeah. they sue each other. You know, we're not here to judge them. But you, believer, don't sue each other. You know, and if, if, if you keep going on, verse four, in the NLT version, it says, each to have such lawsuits with another is a defeat for you. Why not accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why yeah. not let yourself be cheated? Why? Because we have a ton of pride because we're selfish. That's why we don't want to get, we want to win. Competitive. We're not like Jesus. If you notice in First Corinthians, I think it's, uh, yeah, First Corinthians two twenty three. I'm sorry, two twenty one. First Corinthians two twenty one. But God called you to do good. So suing is not good. He called you to do good. He's talking to Christians, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example. And you must follow in his steps. So we don't do this to anybody. Jesus was right. And he was innocent. And he didn't to anybody. And then he goes on, verse 22. He never sinned. Nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted. Nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Yeah. Yep. If we don't see somebody, nothing's going to happen. But if we have trust in God, God will take care of it. Right. You know, that's just it. There's no trust in the Lord. We don't allow room for God to do anything. We take matters in our own hands. You know, even when things go wrong, we start making, you know, what am I going to do? We start doing stuff instead of, why don't you let the, see, why don't you let the Lord fix that? <laughs> he says, bring your burdens to me. My yoke is light. We don't, you know. Right. Like, oh yeah. Okay. But how, how come when something happens, we fall apart? Right. You didn't even give, you didn't even give a chance for God to do something. You know, like just wait. You know, sometimes God does that so He can show His glory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what He, you know, He shows glory. We don't give Him a chance to. We want to rush and do things, and you know, could I coming coming up here? I threw my hands up. Forget it. You know, Leonard's messing around and. Everything's delayed, COVID's this and that, and all these people doing. I was like, God showed his glory. Went right in there, smoothed everything out in his time. And I was like, yeah, there you go. But, um, you know, so if you react, you know, it's like, wow, what's going to happen? You know, you're freaking out, reacting to the situation. Walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. so you got to give God time, give God room. You know, you want to put God in the, is he driving your car or is he in the back seat? Look at, um, at verse six, uh, verse six of this, um, uh, Paul wrote, uh, but brother goes to law with brother and that before unbelievers. And so you have two believers who are suing one another. They have this dispute and they're doing it in front of unbelievers. Yeah. And that that takes me back to um, Romans um, two twenty four, and this is a quote from the Old Testament, and I think it's Isaiah, a quote from Isaiah. So it's Romans two twenty four. 
Paul, I think, is quoting Isaiah, and he says, for the name of God is blasphemed, blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as it is written. And so look at um, the way the name of God is blasphemed, the way the name of Jesus is, is blasphemed in the world because of things like that, because of um, false teachers, because of people claiming um, to be believers, but they're not, right? Because there's no Holy Spirit. There's no change. There's no new creation. Um, so I think Paul's warning us um, against that. And I like I like how Ponzi said, don't sue anybody, you know? Um, I like that. Yeah. yeah. If we're mm -hmm. suing one another, why? How are we making the gospel attractive to the world? You know, right. Seriously, you're watching two Christians sue each other. Why would I want that Christianity if you people can't even right. get? Right. So called. Right. So called. So called Christians. But yeah. Yeah. I look at. Where's the joy and peace in that? Yeah. Right. Kind, being kind, gentle, and self-controlled. Where is it? Well, um, we we like the we like that part of Galatians, but we don't like the part before that, the five the five twenty two. Um, five nineteen. You talking about? The, yeah, five five seventeen. Yeah, five seventeen uh, through nineteen. Yeah. And and twenty right. Um, for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife. So enmities is hatred. Strife is you know maybe you're you're suing somebody. Right, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like the these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah, you, you can't so, be, you can't be suing your brother and loving them at the same time. Right. right. So right. You, you can't apply these principles, you know, and do other things. So it's like this should be, you know. Uh, thermometer or something, you know, right, uh, you know, to help you to stay in line with uh, with the Holy Spirit. Because how how do you produce the fruit? You know, you're not doing these things, <clears throat> right? Uh, you know, or you're going to be in the the acts of sinful nature, right? When you guys say sue, do you guys just mean um bringing something against a a brother to court, not you know, uh, I want to get this much money from them. I'm suing them for this much money. Same thing. It's the same. Dispute. There's no difference. Right. Yeah. Whatever dispute. You have, a, you have a dispute with another brother. And you're, and you're um, taking it to the court system that belongs to the world. Right. right. Instead of working things out with him. You're right. working in the law. And then scripture says you're not under the law. You're right. trying to use the law to, to harm someone or to fix what's wrong with you. Instead of fixing what's using the fruit of the spirit to fix what's wrong with you. Right. Like, you have a dispute with somebody. And if, you, if you ask something against somebody, the Bible tells you to go and, and rebuke them. And then if they don't listen to you, take it before another witness. And if they don't listen to you, take it before the church. It never says take them to court. All right. So apparently right. we're doing it. And that's why it's written. So he's, he's telling us not to do it. Well, you got a dispute with your wife. Will you take it to court and divorce her? Right. Right. Mm. And that's 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 about what happens. <laughs> well, God says He hates divorce, so you go out and, oh, uh, you know, we don't get along. We don't, you know, we're not we're not having love, joy, and peace, and patient. And I'm not kind to you. Uh, let's take it to court and get rid of you. It's pretty hard right. to take someone to court and love them at the same time. Right. The, the greatest command is to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you love them, you wouldn't be taking them to court, would you? And to love your wife like Christ loved the church. How do you how do you doing that one? Right. I mean, that's just a direct. I mean, if we start looking at this, you know, the word, and I mean, really slow down, and yep. not just be hearers 
of the word to actually do it. 